Namaskar. I hope you students yesterday enjoyed the class nicely and I also hope that you went through that topic up to where I taught and definitely you got the ideas related to farming activities in Palampur along with how the lands were distributed, how they achieved multiple cropping and modern farming. In modern farming, how they achieved green revolution. Up to that I had discussed and you got a nice chance to stay at home safely and keep on learning. All the best. And today I would like to continue from uh, the effects of green revolution and its importance, merits and demerits uh, along with uh, labor, capital and non-forming activities in Palampur. Okay, let us start. Dear students, now we discussed both the important two types of uh, techniques adapted by the people of Palambur. One side we discussed about uh, multiple cropping, another side modern farming, thereby the people they achieved green revolution. Now you people might have been wondered uh, whether the green revolution achieved by all the states in India? No, only Punjab, Haryana and Western UP, they achieved uh, this vote uh, greatly, thereby the green revolution uh, took place in all these uh, different states. But at the same time, so let us talk about uh, Palambur, there we have to make one what comparative study by using the traditional seeds, uh, they got only 1300 kg from hectare, one hectare. But by using HYV seeds, uh, their production increased and multiplied and they received or got uh, 3200 kgs from one hectare of land. Just to imagine, see what a contrast picture we people are seeing with the help of traditional seeds, the output is very very lesser. But by using modern techniques and modern seeds or HYV seeds, the production is amazing. Now, let us take a quick review over this. I want to brush up your memory. I want to test, give your one test to your brain. Now, are you ready to take the question? Please write down the question. Uh, list out the differences between multiple cropping and modern farming. Got it? Differentiate between multiple cropping and modern farming. Let us enter into the very important crucial issue nowadays we people are uh, seeing in and around regarding environmental problems. One side we are recommending to use chemical fertilizers, HYV seeds, pesticides. On the other side we are weeping and crying. Am I right or not? Come on. Yes, certainly same person correct. One side we are increasing the production, but on other side we are causing great damage, damage to our land as well as to the water bodies. By using chemical fertilizers, one side the groundwater level is got, one side the groundwater is getting to be polluted, another side the microorganisms and bacteria are also getting to be destroyed. And one side, very very important that the groundwater level is getting depleted. So these are all the drawbacks we people are seeing by using what chemical fertilizers, pesticide, land pollution, water pollution, air pollution and what not. So but no other alternative, we have to click one side, on this side we have to find out some alternatives for that with the help of bioforming and using biomanuals in order to overcome this problem. Am I right? All of you ready to follow which type of techniques? So if we want to make only what eco-friendly or environment friendly type of cultivation or farming. Am I right? Okay. Now, when we are talking about the land, the last part in the land section is that how the land is to be distributed. 
So yeah, already we discussed about uh, will the land sustain. So if you want to make the land sustain, that what drawbacks we people are having, already I told you. But once again, I want to brush up your memory. One side loss of soil fertility, another side excess use of chemical fertilizers, pollute groundwater, lakes, and kill microorganisms and bacteria. Very important. Reduce the water table level below, below the ground. Okay. Now let us enter into the very important aspect land distribution in Palambur. How the land is getting to be distributed amongst uh, different categories of farmers. Generally we are dividing the farmers into four categories. Who are they? Number one, landless farmers. Number two, small farmers. Number three, medium farmers. And number four, large farmers. Generally the farmer one who is not having land called as landless farmer. A farmer one who is having less than two hectares of land called as small farmers. A farmer who is having bought more than two hectares up to five hectares we can call them as medium farmers. More than five or ten or whatever it may be above that then we may call them as what large farmers. So in Palambur how the land is to be distributed among these different categories of farmers number one. See how many landless farmers are there? 150 families. Come on tell me how many families are there in Palambur? Yes, 450 families are there we discussed earlier. So out of that 450 families, 150 families landless farmers, no land. Then number two, 240 families small farmers owning less than two hectares of land. So here we have to think about one case study from your textbook. There you are having that Gobin and he is having what 2.25 hectares of land. But another side one alarming situation we people are seeing he is having three sons and so he decided to divide the land. How much land one person will get? Come on tell me how much? Yes 0.75 that is hectares of land each and every son is they are having. So is it enough for them to feed their family? Very difficult for them to meet their everyday meal or square meals a day. So they are ready to rear animals in order to gear up their family income. Now let us go for the other category that is 60 families, medium and large farmers. So medium and large farmers I told you that uh, owning more than 2 hectares or more than even 5 or 10 hectares then they are called as what large families and there is what medium and large farmers. Come on, let us discuss this with the help of an interesting pie chart or build diagram. So through this, how beautifully we could get into in Palambur, that is what, this is the cultivated area. A 64 percentage of cultivated area owned by 20 percent farmers, rich farmers. So sad, 36 percentage of cultivated area owned by 80 percent of farmers. So just you see, so that is uh, uh, more that is what people but less land in their hands but lesser amount of people but no more land in their hands. So such a what contrast picture we people are seeing regarding the owning of the land. Are you getting into, now you note down this. Try to take it that with the help of your paper and then pen to so try to draw out this pie chart. You can get all this, this pie chart from your textbook also. Shall I give one or two questions as a review? How many types of uh, farmers are there in Palambur? And what about their uh, criteria in order to divide the farmers? And please uh, write down about uh, the drawbacks of uh, using chemical fertilizers. Now, I would like to summarize what are the points we discussed. Number one, we discussed about the meaning of production. And number two, what about the infrastructure facilities available in Palambur, we discussed. And factors of organization, we discussed. And very interesting part in that land, we discussed regarding the land, whether the land size is changed or not. In order to get more production, what technique they adapted, like multiple cropping and modern farming. Next, we discussed about how can we preserve the fertility of the soil and then very very interesting that how the land is to be distributed amongst the farmers. Am I right? Now let us enter into the second most important one of the factors of production namely labor. We know that broadly we are having two types of people farmers and farm laborers or hired workers. 
regarding farmers the small farmers what about their condition they are never ready to engage the farm laborers they are ready to do the work by themselves or by the family members no need for them to engage any farm laborers what about the rich and medium farmers or the larger medium farmers they wanted to hire the laborers those hired laborers called as farm laborers then we are having one difference farmers and farm laborers farmers they are the owners of the land they are having that ownership over the crop also but regarding farm laborers they got no right either over the land or over the crop then for what purpose they are doing the work they are getting only the wage so we may call them as paid workers so how they are going going to be get their wages or what wage they are ready to get there also we are seeing one difference what is that or the wages are quite similar or identical everywhere or every season or every crop no certainly not wages differ from crop to crop wages differ from season to season and wages differ from nature of activity suppose if they are doing harvesting work that they may get one wage and if they are doing that weeding the out of the what weeds that they are getting another type of wage and at the time of sowing they are getting another type of wages so that depend upon the nature of activity even wages differ from place to place for example in kerala if the number of laborers are more then there that the payment may be lesser but in tamil nadu if the laborers are lesser in number then that they are they may ready to get more wage so wages differ from place to place sometimes the paid workers are provided with meals and they paid either in kind or in cash what is the difference about kind means they may be given what the food grains or other items and their cash they could get what hot cash or money in their hand when we are talking about the wage situation in palambur particularly regarding 2011 data that is a wage according to government date wage should be paid rupees 115 but uh, what payment they are giving rupees 80 only how much reduced that is what near about 35 rupees not given to the workers why is it so come on tell me why the wages given to the farmers or the hired hired laborers lesser in palambur because of what because of the thick competition because more people are there to do the work when the competition is there thick then the wages also getting automatically what to be reduced so this is a situation we people are seeing uh, let us even discuss with the help of one what uh, pictorial representation in your book uh, that is uh, dala and ramkali the conversation between these two people dala and ramkali both are paid workers but they are narrating their situation we are saw the rich farmers exploiting them and now the, how how their days of working also getting lesser due to the introduction of modern techniques modern machineries like uh, tra tractors uh, thresher harvesters uh, and other what uh, machines and whereby they are getting what low wages and that to what near about 2 to 3 months in a year so sad so dala was ready to borrow money from the money lender at a high rate of interest what about ramkali ramkali also narrating her sad story that she is also borrowing money from the money lender very difficult for her to repay that money both rama and ramkali these two are pushed into the depths of trap there is an awkward situation from where uh, the workers or the people are unable to come out so such was that was a situation we people are seeing in the villages like palambur regarding the farm laborers as a review please try to take a question differentiate between farmers and farm laborers okay so differentiate between farmers and farm laborers see now uh, let us uh, discuss about third important factors of production capital already we discussed land and labor now we are going to enter into the third important factors of production capital see first question how to meet the capital requirement why capital is required capital here is either in the form of fixed capital or what that is working capital all farmers they are in dire need of capital and then in order to continue there that is what farming activities now amongst the farmers who are in dire need of capital and then to whom they are ready to borrow and then and what about their condition 
This is very important question. We have to rise in our mind. See, regarding rich farmers or the large and medium farmers, no need of borrowing the money. No need of getting capital from others because huge harvest, huge production, huge sale, huge profit and they are rolling on money. So, no need for them to borrow the money or to borrow the capital. But what about the small farmers? Already I told you that small farmer is a person who is having lesser than two hectares of land. Just you see, what about their condition after the harvest? After the harvest, uh, very low production, low profit and uh, difficult uh, for them to meet their capital. Then what they are ready to do? They are ready to borrow the money from others. They are ready to approach whom? They are ready to approach Number one, money lender. One who is ready to lend the money for oh, rate of interest. And number two, large farmers. And number three, traders. And number four, friends or relatives. So this, from these people, they are ready to borrow the money. But uh, what is the most important adversing situation here we people are seeing? When they are borrowing money from these people, the rate of interest is very high. Very difficult for them to repay that loan or that credit. Just you see in your book, there is a very beautiful, a very what interesting one case study regarding Savita. She is having one acres, one hectare of land in order to do work in that. She is in dire need of working capital. Uh, she has to buy the seed and she has to buy the fertilizer and everything. What she did, she ran under the what feet of Tejpal Singh, the rich farmer or the large farmer in Palambur and he was ready to give the money. But what are the conditions he put? Number one, rate of interest 24%. Just imagine bank rate of interest near about 8 to 12 percent but here 24 percent that to what about the duration only four months this is number two number two three Savida she has to do the, uh, the harvesting work in the field of Tejbal Singh just imagine she has to do the work in the field of Tejbal Singh that too at the wage of what 35 rupees just imagine wage he, was, he is ready to give only rupees 35 and then uh, she has to repay that amount within four months that to rate of interest to 24. Now see the condition of Savita she has to look after her family and she has to look after her own land and on the other side she has to run here and there uh, to fulfill the need of uh, Tej Pal Singh also. This is uh, these are all the conditions of the uh, small farmers. So here one very important question I want to make you people to note down come on you take down the question say uh, what about the condition of these small farmers regarding getting the loan write down are they from whom the small farmers are getting the capital and how and what are the drawbacks that they are facing out of that I hope you noted down the question uh, now, uh, let us uh, move to the very interesting part. When I talked about you, the uh, large farmers, uh, they got more production, surplus, and what they are ready to do out of that surplus product. They are ready to keep in their houses or they are ready to sell it in the market. That is a very important question. But uh, people like Gobin Sons or Savita, no question for them to sell their surplus because what amount of food grain they are getting they are ready to meet their own family needs no question for them to sell the produce or the surplus in the market but uh, farmers like Tejpal Singh what they are ready to do they are ready to go and sell it in the market and they are ready to get what huge profit out of that very important here one point we have to note down when the large farmers they are having huge profit in their hand from where they are ready to invest those amount one side Tejpal Singh ready to what lend money to farmers like Savita this is number one and number two are they are ready to invest that money in fixed capital either they are ready to buy the land or they are ready to buy what one tractor in such a way and then are ready to start one small business here one key point you have to note down when the farmers they are having the surplus in their hands then they are ready to invest those surplus in non-forming activities this you have to underline see non-forming activities geared up only the 
people are having more produce and they are ready to sell it in the market at high rate of profit then only it possible for the people to start what non farming activities in what the villages today i want to talk some crucial points and i want to share some crucial points with you people you might have raised the question why madam is there any need for non farming activities in a village like palambur undoubtedly non farming activities are very 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 important why number 1 in farming activities all people are not having been what engaged because in 100 out of 100 workers only 25 are engaged or 50 are engaged in agriculture or farming activities what about the other left out 50 that is a question mark number 2 regarding non farming activities land requirement is very small this is very important so land requirement is very small capital investment also very small and then very very interesting that only there is a prime requirement of what transport and marketing are to transport the items to the nearby market thereby they are ready to sell the produce and get the profit so what losses the people they are facing that should be compensated and more people should get job and non farming activities also could thrive out in villages like palambur this is the very important uh, point or key point that we have to note down from this lesson now let us go for the next aspect of the lesson the non farming activities in palambur what are the non farming activities so they are having uh, dairy production and then a uh, small manufacturing industries uh, shopkeepers and then transport workers regarding a dairy farming so we have to hear raise one important question is it possible for them to rear the animals yes already i told you that many farmers 240 families small farmers in order to augment their income they are ready to rear the cattle particularly buffaloes from where they ready to get the fodder i already we discussed that during the karif season they are ready to cultivate bajra and then boat very important that is jowar thereby they are ready to meet their what cattle feeds so easy for them to get the milk and ready to enter into the nearby village raiganj and then transport facilities also there so there they got very beautiful one collection center as well as a chilling center how see two important big shots from shadipur town they came there and they are ready to set they set up these two that is collection centers and chilling centers whereby uh, the milk is what uh, getting to be pasteurized after that beautifully tinned and packed and then distributed to nearby towns and then big villages very interesting and number 2 what about the small manufacturing industries is it possible for them to invest huge money we know that large scale industries in need of huge capital huge inputs but uh, small scale industries no that too very interesting that small small mechanism small small electrified devices they used for example mishri lal earlier no electricity used to crush the sugar cane by hand but due to the introduction of the electricity he purchased one electrified mechanized robot that is a sugar cane crusher that is ready to easily crush out the sugar cane within no time and out of that sugar cane juice ready to manufacture jaggery or gur and now all the nearby sugar cane producers also ready to sell their sugar cane to him now he is ready to manufacture what sure their jaggery and very very interesting market also nearby transport also there and he is ready to go and sell those what jaggery or gar and nearby he got huge profit here we have to make one interesting point to be noted what is that no huge capital no hi fi mechanism but with simple technique with simple what usage of that crushing machine running out of electricity how is possible for him to roll on profit this is a very interesting fact regarding shopkeepers we know that every villages are in need of what all items like rice wheat dal and then what oil and then if if it is in front of the school they are ready to keep books pen pencils and some rash that is what grocery items and some people if they are having their houses in front of the bus stand they are ready to keep what one vegetable shop there otherwise eatable shop there whereby they are ready to earn their livelihood 
and very very interesting that transport already we discussed that Palambo roads are flooded with what variety of uh, transport like uh, bogies uh, and then what uh, tractors, uh, trucks, uh, tongas, uh, bullock carts. So how many people were engaged in that uh, transport work? There I want to make one that is very interesting a case study that regarding Kishora. Kishora, he was a very small poor farmer. He got no money in his hand. But what he did, after some years, he borrowed money from the bank at low rate of interest. Thereby, he purchased a buffalo. And out of that buffalo, what are the items now he got? Number one, out of buffalo, he got the milk. Number two, sometimes he ready to use the buffalo in his cart and ready to go on nearby village or nearby towns to collect water clay for the potter maker or number three sometimes he is ready to what carry the gar or jaggery to nearby towns or villages just you see by buying one buffalo how many types of what income he is ready to get one side he is getting milk another side he is using it as a what what in cart another side he is using it what that is transporting the items from the place of production to the market so thereby he is ready to get a huge profit or huge income so these are all the situation we people are seeing in Palabbo now I want to wind up the lesson once again I want to make note down that the key points number one Palambur production next we discussed about farming activities non farming activities two categories in farming activities we picked up the imaginary town or hypothetical village that is Palambur infrastructure facilities there organization factors next we discussed the first factor land how the land is used and how they increase the production with the help of multiple cropping and modern farming and how they wanted to what maintain the fertility of the soil and how they distributed the land these are all regarding land number two labor two types we now discussed farmers and farm laborers and what about the condition of the farm laborers and how they are in trouble we discussed with the help of Dala and Ramkali examples next the third important factors of production capital who are in dire need of capital the small farmers from where they have to go and get a very important that they are ready to go and get from landowners or money lenders or from what are they traders or from friends or relatives but so sad thing that the rate of interest is very high so no question of any profit for them now there we discussed about the case study of what Savita now let us go for the last part of the lesson that is what how they manage manage the surplus farmers like Tej Pal Singh and how they wanted to invest in non-farming activities. Why? Non-farming activity is very very important for the economic development of the villagers as well as the development of our country. Then in non-farming activities we discussed the activities like dairy farming, number two small manufacturing centers, number three shopkeepers, number four transport workers. So from all these things what idea we are getting? If you want to make India truly a uh, uh, economically developing country, attention should be paid each and every, every minute section of the village society, thereby the government should come forward uh, to encourage them as well as motivate them by giving what uh, low rate of interest loan and get them up uh, to do more and more farming as well as non-farming activities, thereby it is possible for us to make India really an economically developed country now see as a what recapitalization or I would like to give some questions please try to note down those questions and try to find out answer for those questions are you ready okay number one discuss about the welfare measures adapted by the people of Palambur village Welfare measures, very important, welfare. Here you have to note down, very important point there. Welfare means you have to talk about electricity, school and hospitals. Based on that you have to give the answer. Number two, they write a, what a very important account regarding factors of production. Discuss about or write about the factors of production in detail. This is from second part. I am giving the question from the second part. 
Then from the third part, the very important question is that the very interesting that uh, how the land is being what utilized by the people of uh, Palambur with a special reference to multiple cropping and modern farming. Please try to discuss these two types of farming, multiple cropping and modern farming. What methodology they are adapting in order to enrich what uh, one side the production. Another side, next very important question I want to give you that about how many types of lab farmers are there in Palambur? How many types of farmers are there in Palambur? And next, very, very important, regarding the labor, write about the condition of farm laborers. Carefully noted down, write about the condition of farm laborers in Palambur. Okay, then next, who are in need of capital? and how they are meeting the capital in the village Palambur. Who are in need of capital and how they are meeting their capital. Here you have to give the importance to only small farmers. Last but not the least question, name the non-farming activities followed by the people of Palambur and bring out such a type of activities, economic importance. Shall I repeat that question once again? Uh, no down. That is, uh, what are the important non-farming activities followed by the people of Palambur and bring out the importance or the salient features of such non-farming activities in Palambur. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Now try to go through this lesson with the help of your book and uh, what are the, that is ideas you are getting out of that. Try to work out over that and try to finish that lesson then and there itself. Okay, thank you.